Hello everyone and welcome to another MetaHealth tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to create a lead generation campaign in MetaHealth. Before we go straight to the point, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps tremendously to create new content, so thank you very much in advance. And let's get started. Step number one, we're going to land here on our MetaHealth manager and we're going to click create to create a new campaign. Because we want to collect leads inside Facebook and Instagram and Messenger and the entire Meta ecosystem, we're going to select leads as the option and we are going to click continue. So leads is going to be our campaign objective. Now here you have two ways to continue. Either you're going to say recommended settings and this means that you're going to go with automated targeting for the most part, or you're going to select manual leads campaign, which is going to give you more options when it comes to targeting. It doesn't really matter at this stage because this video is all about teaching you how to create a lead form attached to a campaign and collect leads. Targeting is important, but whichever option you select here is not really going to affect your campaign results that much. But as a tip, if you are just getting started, go with recommended settings. If you are experienced in meta ads, go with manual leads campaign. If you want to apply some specific targeting, like remarketing, for example, lookalike audiences, go with manual leads campaign. If you are happy to go with the broadest possible audience, go with recommended settings. Now we're going to continue. And here we're not really going to change anything, right? So we're going to give our campaign a name. And if you are into a sensitive category, ideally you can declare it, but if you are not financial product employment or a social company, I think you can safely skip this. We're not going to change anything at the campaign level. We're going to proceed at the asset level. And the first thing you need to pay attention to is the conversion location. You need to select instant forms because we want to capture leads inside the meta ecosystem with the form. So we select here instant forms, then we scroll down and under performance goal, make sure that you select maximize number of leads because we want the system to get us the most leads possible. Now we are going to scroll down. You can inject a budget here either daily or lifetime. We have a video explaining the difference between daily budget versus lifetime budget in meta ads if you want to advise that. And we are going to continue with targeting. We also have a dedicated video on the different targeting criteria on meta ads that you can advise to make the right decision. And finally, we are going to go to the ad level, which is the most important part with lead generation. So let's say that we are going to target the right people. We are happy with our targeting. We're going to scroll down and here I'm not going to focus on the creative. I'm going to focus on the instant because you're going to see under destination this option, instant form. And here you should create a lead form. If you are doing this for the first time, you need to click here, create a form. You are going to give your form a name. So we're going to call it leads and form. And you have three options. More volume means we're going to create a very simple form that users can actually submit in the quickest possible way. A very simple form that only asks users, for example, for details that are already pre-filled and people can click and submit the form. Higher intent means we're going to create form, but we're going to have some screening questions, some additional questions like, for example, what is the best way to reach out to you? When is the best time to call you or email you, for example, or how fast are you looking to buy X, Y, Z product and so forth. And Reach Creative is a new format that allow us actually to have a lot more sections to describe our product and service. So let's actually go with all the three types to actually understand the differences, right? So if we go with more volume, we're going to click next. And here, what you can do, optional but recommended, is you can upload the background image, right? So these are the specs here, 1,200 by six to eight pixels. And this background image is going to show basically here on top of the form. So you control 
actually what people are going to see when the form opens. If you choose use the image from the app, the system is going to take the creative you are using and is going to actually place it here and it's going to act as a background. Sometimes this doesn't fit. So recommended step is to upload your own image so you control how your form is going to look. Then we have a greeting, right? So we have a headline text. So here, my recommendation is you need to input some copy, making people aware of what they are signing up for and what is the offer. For example, sign up to receive the ebook or the guide, or you are going to make it nice and copyright is basically here. So this is very basic. You get the point. And now we have the chance to add a little bit of a description under this headline, right? So what is included in the ebook? So everything you need to know about blah, blah, blah. And we can do this as a paragraph or we can do this as a list. Now, list means we're going to put every unique selling point in a different line, right? So everything you need to know about, let's say, meta ads, uh, learn how to launch campaigns quickly and easily, and so forth. Now, why I always go with paragraph and not with list is because if you select list here, you will see that only the first two options are going to be visible and the user will need to click so more to actually see the rest of your form. But if you go with paragraph, then you have kind of more room to play with the text and entice the user to submit the form. Now, if we are happy with the heading and the description, we're going to click next. And here we have basically the chance to select the questions that we want to include in the form. Now, already the system has name and email. We can click here, add category. and we can start with contact fields, for example. We want to collect phone number. We can actually select phone number, and we can also choose the order of these questions. We want to collect more information, for example, like state or like country or like city. We can add this in. And we have the chance to make certain questions optional, and some questions should be by default mandatory. So two of the questions should be by default mandatory, and the rest, we can make them optional. It's up to you how many questions and what kind of questions you need to inject in your form. In the description here, as the system says, we need to let people know how we're going to use the information that they're going to sell. So we can say here, uh, we will use this information, for example, to contact you or to send you the ebook or to send you the guide or to send you the template. So that's something that is a mandatory field actually for you to fill in. And the next uh, option basically here, which is optional, but can be really crucial for your lead generation is to add our own question. So you can click here, add question, and you can select the type of question, multiple choice, short answer, conditional question, or even appointment request. And let me give you some examples, right? So let's say we are going to select short answer. We're going to ask people, um, what is the best way to contact you? And then they are going to actually give us a short answer. Or maybe we want to make this multiple choice, right? So uh, when is the best time to contact you? And then we're going to say here, for example, morning, evening, afternoon, and we can actually add options for people to select. And here on the right-hand side, you can see the preview of your form. Now, the last thing that we need to do, two more steps here. We need to click next. We need a link to our privacy policy, ideally. So here we need the link to our privacy policy. So www.test.com slash privacy policy. Some of you may say, what if I don't have privacy policy? I have, let's say, uh, terms and conditions. I have, let's say, a different type of page or I don't even have terms and conditions or privacy policy, don't panic. You can put even your homepage on your website. That's a little loophole, I guess, here. And the last thing that you need to customize is the end. So the user submitted the form. Now you can customize the ending. You can say, for example, thanks, you are all set. You can visit our website or exit the form, or you can customize the message, ideally to let them know about the next steps. 
for example, we're going to send you the ebook via email, make sure you check your social and spam folders. And you have the ability to add a call to action in the end of the form. So you can say, go to our website and you can put the link to your website here, or you can upload, let's say, an image here, let's say a file that people are going to see when they submit the form, or you can put your phone number or your WhatsApp number, or even let's say you have a promo code, right? So Facebook forms now give you a lot of really cool options for you to play with. Now, this is the first option, more volume, right? So let's actually select higher intent and see the difference. The difference here is you see that there is a review screen, right? So initially, you're not going to see any difference with what we did before. So you're still going to have to upload the background image, a headline, a description of what this is all about. Then you will need to basically here go with the questions of the form. And the only difference with this option is that you have this review screen, basically, that uh, you are going to inject. And what is this review screen? So as the system says here, it gives the people the chance to look over their information and deliberately clear here <clears throat> and deliberately here click submit. So it is more intentional essentially, right? So people will be able to review their information, review their answers, and they will have to verify that they are correct and they are going to slide to submit. And then we have the ending, right? Which is exactly the same as before. The last form type now is a little bit more intriguing and a little bit cooler, I would say, more fun, but it's creative. So we are going to come here. We are going to add a creative here, which is going to be of a different size versus the previous forms, like a square size. We are going to have a headline. We're going to have an overview that's basically same with the previous forms. But now we have a lot more creative options, right? So we can add information on how, for example, it works. We can add information on what our product, for example, is about, or we can even add, let's say, different products here. We can add social proof and let's say testimonials here. We can also add incentives. So offers, for example, promo codes, disclaimers, and so forth. This is a new type of form. Now, who should use this type of form if you are selling maybe a product or a service that requires a lot of explanation, it requires to educate people on how it works. If people are submitting maybe a lead form and then you have multiple offers, so let's say you are a real estate agent and you have, let's say, multiple uh, projects that you are working on, if you are... I don't know, let's say an educator, a teacher, and you have multiple offers, multiple programs that people can enroll. If you are a coach and you have multiple offers, then this form is probably the best option because it adds a little bit of explanation on how things work when people submit the form. It also allows you to inject information about your products. It also allows you to inject information about different incentives, for example, that you may have, and also testimonials. Now, this is cool, but also it comes with some cons. What are the cons? Because you are going to inject this information up front, obviously there is an extra step between clicking the form and going straight into the questions. Questions, privacy, policy, ending is exactly the same, actually, with what we explained before which means that this type of form may actually result in lower conversion rates, but perhaps more intentional leads, right? So to summarize here, more volume is called more volume because there is no screening. Users will not have to verify their information. It's a quick form. People are going to submit it in a very straightforward and fast way. And it's up to you to inject, let's say, certain screening questions to increase the quality of leads. Tire intent, the difference here is that we have this review screen, which is essentially a question to the user. Do 
you agree basically to submit this form, everything looks good, so it makes everything a lot more intentional. So it increases the quality of leads, however, it may decrease likely your conversion rate. And Reads Creative is probably the most interesting format. It allows you to actually inject elements like how it works, your products, social testimonials, and so forth. So you can do a much better job when it comes to selling your offer to the users, but there is this additional step between the click and the questions of the form. You can create and test different forms. Obviously, every ad can only be attached to one form. Once you are happy, basically, you are going to save. You are going to then find your form here. So let's say if you created forms before, every time you come here, you will see them here in this list. You are going to select the form and you can publish your campaign, right? So what you can do is perhaps maybe create one ad set with exactly the same ads that is going to use form A, another ad set with exactly the same ads, same targeting that is going to use form B. And then you can A-B test the different forms. And from there, all you have to do is basically to publish your campaign and just wait for the leads to come in. Where can you find these leads now? We have another video dedicated on exactly that. All of these videos are linked down to the video description below. So you can actually check on all the previous steps that we discussed, daily versus lifetime budget, targeting on meta ads, where we can find the lead forms, all of this information can be found in the video description. It's separate videos, so you can go in depth into these topics. That's it. That's how easy it is, I would say, to create a lead generation campaign in MetaAds. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you found this helpful and you learned something new, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I have a great day in end times. Thank you, everyone.